Girl meets boy. Boy's got a big d- Boy is well endowed <laughs> on the internet. Girl is nosy. Girl watches all of boy's content. Girl has dreams. Boy slides into DMs. You guys, Earthmaster slid into my DMs. <laughs> Welcome to Disrespectfully. With Katie Maloney and Dana Kathan. Unapologetically. We're here to do what we want to do. Spilling the tea. Babe, you're going to see the power of women. Like, disrespectfully. It's official. He is just the loveliest guy. The best part is, is that he asked you to tell him about your dream. He did ask me to tell him about my dream. Did you tell him all the details? We were like DMing and I was like, this stays between us consenting adults. And he was like, yes, yeah, so cool. Like, you as well, blah, blah, blah. But then to be fair, I did ask him if I, because he was, first of all, he's very lovely. He listened to our episode. And I was kind of horrified and was like, I need to listen to it back because I feel like I black out when I'm here. Like, who knows what I say? And then I listen to it and I'm like, uh. But he was tickled pink. He thinks we're very funny. And he was flattered and loved the conversation. So that's kind of how it started. And he was just curious about my dreams. So I told him more detail than I will tell all of you. But we also were just chit-chatting back and forth. And he he really just does seem like the nicest down-to-earth person. And then both of us separately talked to your friend that knows him. Mm -hmm. And she kind of backed all that up. And I love her too. She's great. Shout out to Christina. Christina. We love you. She was she was also because he told her that we were talking about. I know I meant to tell her like, hey, by the way, I kind of shared what you told me. Sorry, I didn't give you a heads up. I just kind of spaced that. I'm really excited for you and the Girthmaster. Look, the Girthmaster, (laughs) it was being so sweet. He was like, we're so romantic in Italy. And I was like, we are romantic in Italy. And so now he's like, you know, maybe we'll be eloping there. So we'll see. But I or maybe you should just go to Italy and like live out your dream. We have options. But again, I mean, I'm I think your friend's a champion. I still have my doubts, but more than I truly want to be his friend. Like he is just seems like such a down to earth, wonderful person. And I have so many questions. So we are putting it into the universe. He's here for a month. And basically he was like, would love to connect, but I'm busy. Are you coming to Australia anytime soon? I was like, am I going to Australia? And no, I don't have any plans on the calendar, but I'd love to. But we would like him to be the first official guest of Disrespectfully. (laughs) Let's make it happen. It's possible that we're going to put this in the universe and it'll flop, but sometimes you have to risk your business. He's going to be here for a month and he's not going to carve out a little time for you? I mean, he's a, he's a busy guy. I'm sure. His, Did he ask you to hang out? Well, he said he would like to, but he doesn't have time here. So he was like, are you going to be in Australia soon? I'm going to Italy this or Europe this summer. He's here now. I know. I thought that too, but I'm not going to press him. I don't know. Okay. I'm Listen. sure. Look, I'm sure his I'm birthday schedule him. is all booked up. I get it. <laughs> Okay, sure. He has lots of girthy engagements, but yeah, I'm like, please make two hours for me. But instead of like showing you around town, I'm going to show you the studio and we'd like you to be a guest. Instead of showing me around town, show me some that. I was kidding. Well, also because we were going back and forth in comments and I was like kind of, you know, and then he like followed me on Instagram and I was like, so you just slide in my DMs and then he never did. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I saw his DM yesterday and smile from ear to ear and immediately sent it to you because I was so excited. Oh, my. I mean, we are the coven. We are the witches. So we have powerful minds. And sometimes I forget that. I make the- You <laughs> do have a powerful mind because on Monday. Oh, no. You talk about it? I didn't want to. But then Joe's story requires a conversation. Yeah. Well, we could share our time and touch on it. Yeah. Okay. So Dana and I went to iHeart Radio Music Awards. And it was on Monday. And it was a really good time. But we had a feeling that we were going to run into someone (laughs) we once knew just because she'd been to these events in the past. We're talking about Rachel Levis. And I was like, you know what? There's going to be so many people there. Like maybe we might like see her from across the room. Who knows? But like, I'm not going to put that out there. (laughs) But you did. I was like, no, we're going to see her and Uh, there'll be an interaction. So we get in line for the carpet and I turn around and she's getting out of her car. I mean, we're like feet. She's away, right behind We're this. feet away from each other. And I just look at Katie <laughs> and I was like, Rachel's right there. And like, it's like, of course. She looks so visibly uncomfortable. I'm like, I'm just like standing here. I'm really not paying you any attention or mind. I'm just waiting to like go get my picture taken so I can go inside and get a drink. I'm not trying to like make a situation happen here. But she just was like, really trying to not make eye contact trying to, she was just she was trying to skip the line she was trying to get away from us and i'm like ma'am i don't 
I don't care. And it might seem that way because I'm sitting here talking about it right now. I get it. But like, I got to talk about it because <laughs> it happened. Well, the thing is, we're just like, we truly were just existing. We're not trying to make anyone feel uncomfortable. We were not going to interact with her. Obviously, we had nothing to say. I'm mm -hmm. sure she would not want to see us. And I'm sure we're going to get a cease and desist letter for existing soon. I'm sure she's <laughs> going to sue us for existing. But that was a little uncomfy, but is what it is. And you know, I was thinking about this because people are like, move on. It's been so long, whatever. And I'm like, no, I get that for the rest of the world. But she's someone who hurt one of the most important people in my life. And mm -hmm. so I'm I'm never going to forget that or well, and, move on. For it. it doesn't mean I want and to have continues any... to do so. Continue, you know, yeah, continues to do so. So it's a, it's a bit hard to just completely move on from it and pretend that she doesn't exist because she's out here running her mouth so yeah you know yeah that's happening no that's definitely part of it but we got through that little hiccup but then iheart was so fun i'm so glad we went it was a combination of arguably every powerhouse i'd ever want to see in a room it was insane meryl streep was there on guys. one stage meryl streep share jennifer hudson just think about it share performing do you believe I almost collapsed like the it, I just I didn't even know that I needed to see share live in my life before that and now I'm like I need to go to a full Cher I concert need I need more immediately and she looks amazing I'm like she looks the same as she did in burlesque okay props to her yeah. her doctors sign me up who is doing your work you look great but she was like talking about she had these pants on that she's, were she's like I know what you're thinking do I only have one pair of pants she's like I've had these for 40 years I'm like I'm not even 40 years old yet <laughs> close but I have pairs of pants that don't fit the same way from six months ago. Thank you. That's what I was just thinking. I was like, hold on. I can't even fit in the same pair of pants from last year. Well, that's not true. But how? Anyway. But do you know what I, what I love the most about it? Because, you know, I've been to other award shows and it's like, you got to sit there. They got to name all the nominees. And, and then you might get like a couple performances sprinkled in. But what I loved is that everyone that performed was the winner of their category. So like there was just performance after performance. They get their award. They're like, thanks, everyone. And then on to the next. So it was just it was like a, a concert, essentially, just of like all these different musical acts from like different genres, like Jelly Roll and then uh, TLC, Justin Timberlake, Green Day. So you were just getting just hit after hit. Green, Crazy. Green Day paid two songs that I was we were obviously geeking out about that too I was just like I mean I it it felt like I made up this event in my brain and then mm -hmm. it executed obviously what I was most excited about besides a couple of performances Beyonce was there mm -hmm. accepting the innovator award and the last from Stevie Wonder of all people what yeah also he played harmonica on I can't remember what song it is now but she, I didn't even know that until she said it when she was talking to him I'm like of course because mm -hmm. they're both brilliant artist but last time I saw her was at the Renaissance tour in September and me and Logan and Ariana and Raleigh and our other friend Ariana who also listens to the avid listener to the show so shout out Ari we were front row so that was and that's like I've seen her like six times in concert so that was the closest I had ever been but we had great seats and so we were close she looked amazing and even mm -hmm. to just hear her speak for a few minutes I was like screaming under my breath and grabbing Katie's arm you're probably bruised from the amount of time I grabbed her. yeah you after every sentence she spoke you were like Woo! Woo! You were full on woo girl. Oh, the people around us hated us. And I was like, Dana, I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I know. I know. I get it. It just I was. I I just let you do your thing. You let me be me, which was great. But Meryl, I almost fangirl mm -hmm. out about as much. Like, oh my gosh, who doesn't love Meryl Streep? But I mean, my I love Meryl. Dearly departed mother was a huge Meryl Streep fan. So I'm like, she would just. I mean, well, you know, she's gone mm -hmm. but she would just die and die again and she would laugh at that joke so fucking relax if you're being precious about it at home but yeah I was so happy to see that icon and the fact that they're still good friends by the way fun fact you cannot find Silkwood anywhere yeah we tried to when we, out, got, we got home <laughs> we got home me and Katie got wine we got dinner martinis then wine and we're whole wasted doing yeah. our skincare routine and then looking for Silkwood and we couldn't find it so if anyone knows where we can stream that let me know but we Wait, not we're, we're gonna circle back to that but I was, I was gonna say I have met Stevie Wonder before. Where? Okay, at Sir. They had his daughter's birthday party there. Cause what I was, year was this? Oh, God. It was, had to have been like 2011, maybe. 2010, mm. 2011. Because I was like one of the few people at Sir that would work lunch shifts. 
So it was like a daytime thing and they like rented out the space or, you know, they wanted the whole space for his daughter's birthday. So he came in and he was as wonderful as you, Stevie Wonder, being wonderful. Uh, Yeah. Was this before the show started? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What an incredible Mm -hmm. celeb interaction. It was and he was just the sweetest. Yeah. I bet he's such a lovely guy. Family, wonderful. Everyone was wonderful. So I feel fortunate. Yeah, that's well, I mean, amazing. And so him and Meryl, there were people that I just didn't even expect to see there that we did. And also to your point, I too loved like it was two hours, which was the perfect amount of time. It wasn't like this long drawn out thing. We stayed for an hour and 40 minutes. The second Beyonce <laughs> walked off, I was like, I got to pee. Let's go. We were hungry. My feet hurt. I'm not really fully built for those types of events because I as much as I love putting on a dress, getting, you know, putting on some makeup, getting, you know, getting like done up like that. I don't wear heels often and you know after about 40 minutes of that i'm pretty done oh we were miserable the second like (laughs) i'm i'm mad that the current gen Gen z all get to wear sneakers like we do to the bars Mm -hmm. and whatnot and we were all in business attire in 2012 in six inch platform (laughs) heels like that's what we were wearing out and you guys get to wear baggy jeans and like little crop Mm -hmm. tops and sneakers it you none of you have bunions and it shows and i'm just like I love a sneaker. We were, our feet hurt immediately and we were starving because we didn't eat before. And so we were like, yeah, where the fuck can we get a meal and get out of here? Yeah. So we bounced. So we, yeah, we did that. But speaking of dresses, this is why I'm circling back to even mentioning, I thought it was relevant to mention the Rachel thing, which we discussed not even doing. So Joe, who some of you may know from Vanderpump Rules, I got tagged in it and I sent it to Katie on a TikTok. She posted this story. So this like, I don't know what the publication was, but they posted it was like, life and style, life and style posted like lists of, you know, people's photos from the red best carpet. Best and worst dress. Best whatever. and worst dress. So Rachel was like a, either one above us or a few above us. So it was, it was a screen recording, not even a screenshot. And she's like, wow, work. I love your outfit. And then she had this like circle on Instagram stories. You know what I'm talking about? They move the little gifts or whatever. And it was down at the bottom and she scrolled down to us, me and Katie, that got worst dressed on that list. And also we looked hot fire. I'm not worried about that she circles it and then just holds it there and then her next story is a photo of her from the reunion tagging her stylist you know because joe is internationally known for her style choices the tom tom hat what do you have to say about that katie not much i saw that i was like i'm going back to bed (laughs) like i see that i'm just like that's all you have to say like i feel like you could have done better yeah like if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna try to shade that's not very good. Sorry. I'm not surprised you went back to bed because it was boring to me. But what bothered me about it is I just don't have a passive aggressive bone mm. in my body, nor do you. So if you want to shade some, tag us. At me. Tag us, girly pop. At me. You don't like you, you don't gotta it, do all that and say like it with your whole fucking chest. Say it with your whole chest. Ten toes down. Tag us and be like, hey, you guys looked like shit. Even this magazine says so. You don't just like hover over where it says worst and then like scroll away. It's like, girl. Well, like, it's it's like, it's just how I picture her. Though. I mean, the way I've physically seen her move in the world, she's like, <laughs> like <laughs> creature. Like that's how she is. So that's that story was a manifestation of, I think, who she is as a person. Well, Made sense. it's also just kind of like um, I've acknowledged that, you know, when I came for her on the Internet, I was in a very different place in you know my life and I was going through a very difficult time and transitioning from you know my divorce and everything like that so I was I was just in a different place I wouldn't respond or post those things or say those things now and you know I've I watched like the season and you know I I felt you know bad for what she went through like with you know like I've acknowledged those certain things so it's like it's weird that like she's now choosing to kind of like have this weird Sort of, I don't know. It's 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 odd to me. Well, I've never done anything to that girl. If you have something to say, you can go ahead and tag me. Well, I can't tag her because she's blocked me. Who knows? Maybe I'm blocked too. But regardless, <laughs> I'm just like I don't know. Even if you're not going to tag, just say it really directly. Just say. And by the way, lol. Did you guys see? And these two look like shit, which we don't. We look fucking hot fire. So yeah, I'm not particularly worried about it. But yeah, I just thought that was uh, some real silly goose behavior. I act. I was audibly cackling when I sent it to our disrespectfully production group. I was like, "You guys." And I'm sorry. How were we possibly worse dressed? I, I don't know. The how comment. To... The comment. Well, obviously, Rachel's manager wrote that or something. But her publicist. Her publicist. Her publicist that like talks shit in in like a 
comment section about me. Yeah, probably that one. Why would you have a messy public? I don't know. Listen, girl, uh, Godspeed to you. Well, she's not very good at her job because she tried to get Rachel to cut the line for the carpet to avoid us. And then they just plopped her right behind us. So on whatever publication it is, it said worst dress. They weren't cohesive. And I'm like, what was I supposed to do? Get Katie a fucking boot near? This was prom. Yeah, we weren't matching. It wasn't like we're podcast partners. We're life partners, what? but we're not. That was their comment on it. But regardless, even if someone doesn't like what I'm I'm good with that. But objectively, we looked hot. People so. have been hating on my style for years and I still don't give a flying fuck. So <laughs> go on. Well, you know, I really loved Joe's outfit there. Oh, wait, Joe wasn't present. At my head, so <laughs> anywho, so we will go back to my place. We're trying to find Silkwood. We can't find it. So we're like, what are we else are we going to watch? So we settle on Barbarian, which you'd never seen, mm -hmm. which is, I think is a fantastic, you know, scary horror film genre movie because it just does something different. If you haven't seen it, you got to watch it because it starts off your typical horror movie. Girl shows up at night pouring rain to an Airbnb, but there's somebody already there. You know, and she's skeptical at first. She sticks around. They have a little bit of chemistry. And then, of course, chaos ensues. But then all of a sudden, like, cuts. Sunny day in L.A. It's Justin Long. You know, and there's, like, some like, bit of, like, levity and com comedic relief. Turns out this Airbnb belongs to him. He's got to go back to this Airbnb. He's got to resolve some shit that he got into. But these two people that were staying in his Airbnb are still there for reasons. Um, and then he gets dragged into it all. And it's just, it's kind of funny it's totally out there it's totally ridiculous but i just like this like spin that they put on it all but we were kind of laughing or commenting on the different tropes of scary movies about how whenever someone's like they're almost free from the the grips of whatever the monster or whatever the evil is and what do they do they go back inside they fucking run towards it they run toward it it's like well it's like in scary movie they have it's like what's her name so hot Carmen Electra and it's like death safety and she's like ah, ah, and goes to death like that's literally and I mean mind you I think have we made it clear we're both big scary movie people yeah. and so I see I, like there's a, just like no scary movie besides that one apparently I hadn't seen so I like am involved deeply in the genre and it's so frustrating when you can completely see where it's going and you're like we would not die we do yeah. great in any of these scenarios, because I would just do the sensible thing. Well, and I, mean, I understand it's a movie, but can someone please make a scary movie in which someone does the right things and like still gets fucked over? Because that would be scary to me. Although I have no survival skills, there's no fucking way I'm running towards danger. There's a, a long stairway that's going down to darkness. Do you know what I'm not going to do? Run down there. You're like, let me just get this rickety flashlight that I go, it turns it on, I go, T -t -t, and it just, Pff. and you have to smack it. Oh, I'm just going to toss it behind me and just keep going. If you don't have a fucking mag light, perhaps you shouldn't go down there. Not to be a prepper, but I'm like, you guys, you know, none of you should be doing that. The guy screams, help me, help me. She goes, what are you doing down there? Help me. Okay. You I'm hear coming. a shout in the distance. It's like, ah, <laughs> she's like, I should probably go check that out alone. You stay here. <laughs> come back up here. No, come down here. OK, I also have a hard time finding one that doesn't surprise me because I just like each step of the way you're like, oh, they're doing this. They shouldn't be doing this. Nope, you shouldn't be doing that. And they just do it and do it. Well, th this one surprised me a little bit. Not necessarily. Kind of. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Cabin in the Woods, though, that one surprised me. Yeah, I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm no, just I saying know. it's not. Come, but I and I will say my favorite thing about a scary movie is when there's perfectly timed comic relief. All scary movies should have moments of that. And that was, Justin Long was amazing. That was very funny. I like him a lot. And yeah. He was great in it. But yeah, don't ever run up or you don't run down. You run away. But you know what? Then you wouldn't have a scary movie. That's what I'm saying. So I challenge A24. If you're out there, if you're listening, if you're a fan of us, if you're a fan of Girthmaster, I'm sure he loves scary movies too. <laughs> Please make a scary movie in which someone does all the right things and is and still, still in trouble. Stuck in it. Well, I think maybe It Follows kind of does that a little bit because it just mm -hmm. if you can't really get away from it that's why it's so terrifying it's gonna find you <gasps> if that noise <gasps> it follows is one of my favorite scary movies i'd say that that shit's terrifying that is like an perfectly executed scary movie like fantastic concept 
I, okay, so there we go. So that's a good one. So more of they that. should take more of those. More of it follows. More of that where it's like they're getting away by any means possible, but you ain't getting away. You ain't getting away. <gasps> yeah, it's nightmare. Well, and I'm just so I'm lit tired all the time. I'm so I would, I would be. Well, have enough. Ten times more exhausted. What? E mom's world was that not an e mom's oh, yeah, world? Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. The ca- fucking kangaroos. <laughs> this whole show is now turning Australian, but only I feel like millennials will get that. You, but I, that's you. You're yeah. turning Australian. That's true. I still say lit tired. I'm lit tired. What happened up? Then fires me so. Then fires me so. Anyway, I don't think is a twenty four. The one that's coming out where it's the perspective of the killer. The killer's dead. But then, I don't know, some people like resurrect this person and is smart. He's now killing every person in its path. That's going to be scary. You did not respond to my text. You want to see Immaculate this weekend? I'm not going to be here this week. Oh, you're gone. Okay. Well, you still could have reminded me. I, was, I didn't respond to it because I was annoyed that you forgot. So Ugh, whatever. Here. Maybe you should share your location with me. Anyway. <laughs> so, Dana, mm. what's your favorite romance trope or fantasy? Mm. Let me think about it. Australian. Australian accents always do it for me. And during my long flight to Australia this summer, you can bet I love my Dipsy app. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, spicy audio stories. <laughs> well, spring has sprung and summer is just around the corner. And as Dana mentioned, we are packing our bags with all the essentials, sunscreen, shoes, and Dipsy. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes, realistic characters, discovering stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flights, and hot and heavy hookups. <laughs> and there's a growing library of fantasy series with werewolves, Greek gods and goddesses, Regency era historical fiction, and fairy smut to explore the bounds of your pleasure. Well, in addition to finding myself on Girthmaster TikTok, I'm also on Book Talk. And the way that this Oof, is, well, I've seen yeah. people talking about Dipsy I love because book it's, talk. it's Book Talk. We Love a smut story, let me tell you. And new content's released every week. So between listening to your favorites again and again, you can explore and find something new. Dipsy offers a modern approach to romance through high quality and captivating audio fiction. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial <laughs> when you go to dipsystories.com slash D-I-S-R-E-S-P-E-C-T-F-U-L-L-Y. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash disrespectfully dipsy stories.com slash disrespectfully for all you new disrespectfully listeners out there dean and i have spoken a lot about our hair journeys the blonde Oof. <laughs> the heat damaged Oof. and the frizzy that's why we're excited that this episode is proudly brought to you by lola v an award-winning hair care line founded by the fabulous jennifer aniston you know hair so iconic it really needs no introduction. We put our hair through the ringer. Coloring and heat styling, stress, aging. And honestly, Jen got tired of the damage and the struggle of having to choose between hair products that work and ones that are actually good for us. So instead of mixing this cream with that serum, she decided to bottle something of her own by diving into the science of it all while using naturally derived plant-based ingredients, which we love. For a limited time, you can get an exclusive 15% off your entire order at lolav.com. Just use code disrespectfully at checkout. Speaking of Jen, you may have heard some recent buzz about how good she smells. And we're here to fill you in on her scent secret. Spoiler alert, it starts with Lola V. I know I've mentioned before that I have a fear of smelling bad, and that's why I love using Lola V. All Lola V products feature their signature scent, a naturally derived blend of herbal, citrus, and woody notes. You know what? Let me see. Get it, get it, get it. It's like a party in my mm. nose and everyone's invited. Fresh citrus, calming rose petal, kind of crisp lemongrass, maybe a little green tea intoxicating woods, maybe like a little gentle musk you have going on. I love the restorative shampoo and conditioner plus the intensive repair treatment because obviously we've seen what I've been going through with my hair lately. It makes me feel like I'm walking out of a spa when I'm coming out of the shower and also it being good for my hair to banish breakage is 10 out of 10. It's obviously something I'm struggling with. Unlock Jennifer Aniston approved hair at lilavie.com. As our loyal listeners, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your entire order when you use code disrespectfully at checkout. That's 15% off your order at L-O-L-A-V-I-E dot com with promo code disrespectfully. 
Please note that you can use one promo code per order and discounts cannot be combined. They'll ask you where you heard about them. Please, please, please support our show and tell them we sent you. Your hair will thank you. So we leave iHeart, we get dinner. We scare the server because we're ravenous animals. We're rabid dogs. We also are dressed really great, contrary to what Life and Style says. Count your days, Life and Style. Your days are fucking numbered. Pache, we go to Pache, which is one of the best restaurants. One of my favorite restaurants in LA, <laughs> Laurel Canyon. Delicious Italian mm-hmm. restaurant. It's And it's nice, but it's not like w- how we were dressed was not appropriate. But we get <laughs> pizza, we get pasta. I think we started with some... We got oh, a Caesar, we got a Caesar. We we're feasting. The rosemary sourdough bread that I just <sighs> could not get enough of. Espresso martinis. We're getting hoisted. They have a little grocery store next door. We get wine. Smart. We go home. I had like parked at Katie's. I was planning on going home. And I was like, well, guess I'm staying here. Let's do our skincare routine. And we did like I've talked about this before. We do this sometimes when we're tipsy. We just we and we were glowing at. And by the way, it was early still. It was like nine or ten, which was great because we had a lot of time for movies. No, it was we left at 815 because I was laughing. I'm like, we would have just been getting from Podge. Oh, from yeah. Pod- OK, yeah. So it's early. So we're glowing. We are comfortable. We watch Barbarian. Next. Step two. We're like, okay, what's a good bedtime movie? The Craft. The Craft. (laughs) (laughs) Where are those girls? It's like, what's your comfort movie? The Craft. It is. It is. It is so great. But and it's like such a wonderful throwback. But we're like giddy because it's just everything's funny and we're drunk and we're like watching this movie. And then I proceed to have the most horrific nightmare. So it wasn't like after consuming girth masters content and then having like a dream that was fun i consume this and then i've also been re-watching sopranos i watched it once i stopped it and i immediately started it again i wasn't aware this wasn't normal until very recently i just obsessively rewatch things constantly all the time so i'm like re-watching it for a second time immediately in succession and so my dream was about i was at tony and carmela's house <laughs> and tony was mad because <gasps> carmela kept eating cockroaches and like snakes and bugs and she was like hiding them Ugh, it makes me like cringe because in the movie there's you know the scene at the end the big climax where there's all the bugs everywhere and the snakes and whatever i know that's where that came from okay yeah. so i had a horrible dream about insects being everywhere and carmela eating them and me watching it and then tony being big mad about it and then girth master comes in and <laughs> <laughs> saves the day i wish he just comes he's like bah, all, bah, bah, bah. all of the stuff you've been consuming my worlds collide. Yeah. His snake kills all the other snakes. No, that's unfortunately not what happened. He was <laughs> not my white and shining armor. Yeah, that was upsetting. But that's what we do. Like, I just prefer a scary movie pretty much at all times. I did see not that long ago. Have you, did you see Talk to Me? Yeah. Also a great execution. Also of a scary movie. Australian. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to say it. If you walk in here one day with a big roll of like a sleeve of Tim Tam, Tam, Tam Tams. Tim, I love Tam, those. Tim. <laughs> I walk in with a fucking kangaroo on a leash. I'm like, this is my kanga. It's my Joey. It's a little Joey for you. You walk with the Tim Tams. Your friend was like, you should ask. How you going? How you going? Did, and he's like, she's like, oh, he's such a chiller. I love the How little to speak phrases. Australian. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'll move on from this topic eventually. Anywho, that was a very wonderful evening overall. I unfortunately had what I would describe as a biblical hangover. And it was the sneaky kind. The next day I was just like working, living my life. And a few hours into the day, I was like, 911 call an ambulance yeah i had what was just like this sort of like looming feeling you know i had I, and the the problem existential was dread just sort of like on the edge of something like this like i was fine i had to like go do shit but it was like this looming then someone described to me as like the champagne uncle huh <laughs> i was like that makes huh? so much sense think about it i am what the fuck are you talking about champagne uncle it's a creepy uncle but why is it a champagne uncle I don't know. It just made sense. I feel like a, if you were like it was a mad dog 2020 uncle, I'd get it I more. I prefer a champagne Or uncle. an old English uncle, but. It's a little handsy in the afternoon. Uh, Close okay. talker. Okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I get it. Picking up what you're putting down. Well, yeah, mine was, a, I don't know, heroin uncle. It was so <laughs> scary. It was, I was, I honestly had the worst anxiety I've had in a really long time. And then I I got dinner with my friend that night and I was just down bad but we've made it through we're here yeah i finally got some sleep and i feel really great we were discussing this we are known for being passionate about face app yeah i wish they would sponsor this podcast <laughs> no way. 
the other day I did my in my annual thing I got an email and it's like thirty dollars for your subscription. I'm like mm-hmm. best money of my year. Oh my god! If you don't know what Face App is, it's like an, a photo editing app that like basically just like sort of edits your face where it'll like add like lashes and like a little bit of like smoke in the corner of your eyes and like just I don't know it's it's almost just like makeup edit it, I don't know it doesn't really like it's so subtle in ways to be fair I, I do this sometimes for fun when I'm bored I'll take photos of people I know and I'll completely change them you can ch- it's so realistic looking you can change their hair Oh makeup, yeah, you, whatever you can do, you can go crazy. You can go with crazy, it. but we prefer. I prefer it very subtle. I still want to look like me. My goal is to make it look like it was taken with professional camera. That's right. my goal. My goal is just to make it look like I did a little bit more makeup than I did, or like it looks like it did at the beginning of the night. <laughs> Mostly, but but you can do like there's different like levels too. Like there's like different. They have different names for like what the like. There's the Hollywood, the cute. And then there's charm. Charm is the favorite. Charm is my. But there's charm one through three. One through five, babe. Five? You can really charm it up. Five would be crazy. It's, it would be insane. Sometimes I will do charm times two if it's far away because you can't really tell. But if it's mm-hmm. a close up, always charm one because you. it's like it can start to rearrange your face. Like truly. Well, it makes your. Yeah. I, I still want to look like you wouldn't like when I tap on it to see the before and after it is. Suh. I'm you wouldn't notice. big fan of the, the subtlety of it, but I also know shame my game. I'm very open about using it. And But here's the thing. When you, do, what we talked about, is you have to charm everyone's face in it. People in the background. <laughs> <laughs> like we're talking, you know, there's the waiter. He got to get charmed. <laughs> you know, if anyone's face is visible, they get charmed. <laughs> They're face apt. Really. Here's the thing. If you use face app and you do not face up everyone in a photo, basement yeah you're gonna look crazy you spend the time even if it's a giant group photo you gotta do it to everyone and it would they should make a feature where you can click everyone's face at once and just do charm times one because you have to individually do it yeah but yeah you gotta do everyone you can't leave people out like you you show your cards as the kind of person you are if you don't face up everyone and also anyone listening who doesn't know what face up is and like maybe lives somewhere not in LA. If you see an Instagram, someone who lives here, they are using FaceApp. Just FYI. Everyone uses it. Some people use this snow app and that one's a little crazy because that one will like, it's when people's, the whites of their eyes are blinding and their teeth are blinding. They're probably using snow app. Some for, yeah, FaceTune. Some. Leah, do you use any apps? Or are you all natural? I'm all natural. Damn. I knew- I'm just, it's out of laziness. This is like, this is the, the one person. But I'm also, like, my Instagram is so lame. It's just pictures of me. Like, <laughs> that isn't, it's okay. Every couple of months with my dog. <laughs> like, Facetune walked so Face App could run. Correct. Because Facetune, like, that's when people were like blurring out their face. They would like, you know, smooth, they do the smooth thing, mm-hmm. but they, they were smoothing out their nose to the point where it's like they just had two holes in the middle of their face for their nostrils. Correct. They looked insane. And then the little Voldemort, people are like, <laughs> He's back. <laughs> Voldemort, he's back. And then they wouldn't do it to everyone in the picture. So they're just looking like smooth. And then everyone else around them is look, looking like greasy, porous messes. If if you're so smooth, the cartilage in your face is gone. We have a problem. <laughs> Things have gone south. You you just look like flat Stanley. <laughs> you know? No bone structure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways, but you... <laughs> <laughs> this is how committed I am to face apping people, okay? <laughs> so you know my dead mom. Oh my God. <laughs> Again, this is fucking funny and she would laugh. I loved her more than anything on planet Earth. Anyone who knows me for five seconds knows this. Talk about her incessantly. I honestly mm-hmm. love talking about her because she's just the best. This year on the anniversary of her death, it was the 11 year anniversary. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of, I have, photos some photos of my early childhood and then like missing a bunch that I would have had with her so we only have them and she wasn't very happy with how she looked at the time there's this really sweet photo of us on a recliner chair and I'm like sitting on her I'm like maybe 10 or 11 and she had a little snack going on and she would you know again she would laugh about this and point it out and I was like charm too I got you (laughs) I ran that shit through face app and she looks like an angel I, I, I did a snatched. couple other things. Yeah, she looks snatched. And it's like also how I remember her looking anyway. You know, we always feel differently, but the people we love and they don't see themselves clearly. But I told this to Katie and the we <laughs> laughed for three because I didn't realize how weird that was until we talked about it out loud. But I was like, you get a face app. You get a face app, mom. 
may she rest, you get a face up. <laughs> I will never post another photo from 94 of my mom again without giving her charm to. What was I thinking? T no kidding. A postmortem face app is the new standard. If you are not doing that, <laughs> you are not showing up for those you love. If I could face app Leo, my cat that died, I would. No kidding. This face doesn't saying, register. Everyone but... gets a face app. And we mean everyone. everyone. Posthumously, I'd like you to welcome you to Filters, mom. And I'm sure she. <laughs> I'm sure she loved it. I'm sure she was like liking from up above. She was like, wow, I look amazing. She's like, thanks, sweetie. You're doing great, sweetie. Thanks, sweetie. With her little martini slouching. <laughs> Shout out Jules. We love her. But that's what I mean. So it's like you got a big ass photo when you got people in the background. You're like, I know you didn't ask for this, but charm. Unless you're in my basement. No face up for you. But <laughs> anyone else face up. If you're in my basement, I'm trying to erase you from the photo. Yeah, we go to smooth. We try to Voldemort smooth it out. <laughs> like the nose, but an entire person. I'm I'm sticking like emojis over you, poop emojis. <laughs> but okay, but this is this also brings me to another thing. Things, yeah. Someone sent me something in my DMs, which I really appreciate. I don't know who it is, so my apologies. But it was something about like parenting, but it doesn't matter because the section of it was talking about how patient millennials are and why, and it's just like really reminds me and i know th if you're gen z sit down because they'll be like i remember that too just because you were like four and you remember your mom like changing your diaper in a blockbuster does not mean you have the same experience that we had okay They're like i was in 2000 i was born in 2000 i remember that too well i was like i don't know 15 in 2000 so like not the same because we really lived between two distinct eras in time uh like that pre-internet cell phone like social media era and then now because they're talking about how when we wanted to watch a movie it wasn't just like opening up netflix or like whatever streaming service and then just buying that movie we had to like get in the car go to blockbuster and then not just that but praying they had a copy of that movie in and you were frisky on that drive too it wasn't like a chore like we all do doordash now because we don't want to leave our homes and interact with others because ugh. but we were like it was an event. Mom, can we go to Blockbuster? Yeah. And then you'd get them to go and you were like, heck yes. It's a oh, yeah, no, you so made, not say you I was saying fuck whole... even as a child. <laughs> oh, it was a whole night. So and then, yeah, you're like, I hope they have it in stock. And then when you'd get there and it would just have the pay you and it was out. Mm -hmm. It was out. And then you just had to pivot and pick another movie. And you would go up to them. They're like, do you know when you're getting another copy? And they look it up. They're like, well, another one's coming in later this afternoon. You'd beg them to like hold it for you. Like, that's what happened. And here's hoping it's coming in. We don't know because people aren't reliable. No. Like, we don't know if they're actually mm -hmm. going to return it on time. They might just eat those late fees. We don't know if they're going to be kind and rewind. I racked up late fees myself. Yeah. There were so many things like that that we were talking about that are nostalgic. Oh, also, like, okay, for pictures, for instance, before before even oh. digital cameras, like we had just like those, you know, we had film disposable cameras. So we took we were taking pictures all night long, not being able to even view them. Then we'd have to go and get them developed and we'd get them back. And they were like. We were looking through them and you had maybe of 20 photos on like a roll of film, 10, if you're lucky, sometimes 18. You know, you, you had to be very selective with the photos you were taking on that camera. It's like, I want to capture this moment, but I'm like, what if there's another better moment in 10 minutes? You just had to go with it. You had to make your choice and assume it was the right one. But we but we did. We didn't think anything of it. We're like, this is going to be great. And then we're not going to see these for like maybe another like week or two. And we're fine with it. We weren't like being all pa impatient about you're it. Like, Airdrop me that pick. The, as I'm putting I'm, my phone I down. I need it like, right now. I need it right now. I want to post it right now so I can get the gratification of people liking it and people seeing it and all of that. Like, no. And then same thing with music. We couldn't just go open up Spotify or Apple Music and listen to a song that we want to listen to or YouTube and listen to a song. Like, we, if we really wanted to, we could <laughs> rip it from the internet. We could lime wire that shit, give Napster. our computer a virus. Yeah. And <sighs> we sometimes, sometimes it would take I don't know, 15 minutes. Sometimes it would take hours and you had and you couldn't preview the song. You just had to go find it. Look at the file. That looks legit. Wait for it to download. Hope no one, you know, interrupts <laughs> the Internet. And then listen to it. And then hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's not corrupt. Hopefully there's not a DJ. There's an ad libs on it. That's like DJ scully skull <laughs> do, 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 do. and you're like god damn it this took an hour to download mm -hmm. how am i supposed to listen to lollipop by lil wayne i can't <laughs> damn it 
Yeah. I can't remember what beyond them call uh, us millennials. I read something recently and by read, I mean, saw it on TikTok <laughs> that said we're we're the last generation that had life without the Internet. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. we had it like dial up and whatever, but meaning not in our the palm of our hands and and whatever. And I think that's those nostalgic memories it's so like you're saying like you're waiting a week for the film you're going to the blockbuster and you don't know if you're going to get your movie there was so much excitement and the disconnectedness and like I have great memories of like playing outside with my friends and doing Mm -hmm. things that I just don't really feel like are a thing anymore and I'm really glad that we got to experience that oh my god me too and I and I and I feel really bad for the generations after us that they don't get those experiences. I mean, they they can, but the problem is is that because of technology and the, how fast it's advanced, that like it's never going to be the same. We have like ten year olds filtering their photos. It's such a bummer. And I mean, again, yeah. So like, then we progressed in a college, high school years, whatever. People had their digital cameras as a wristlet on their night out and we take a thousand photos and then we just dump them in chaos. <laughs> there was no editing. There was no nothing. And you'd be like, wow, this is such a great photo. And you're hoisted and your eyebrows are pencil thin and <laughs> everything. The guy in the background also looks like a monster. You, your, your zits are out for those to see. All of your nostrils are present <laughs> and you loved it. And it was like fun and innocent. And now it's just and look, I'm guilty of that, too. And also, like you just said, the impatience that we all have. I'm already an impatient person. Like I was impatient in 95. So it's gotten progressively worse. So if there's a photo I want, I need it immediately. And then like, while I'm out, I get stuck. Like I need to post it or just do it. Also, when people ask what your hobbies are, I know they should be cooler and like, oh, I hike and whatever. One of my hobbies is face app. I love, <laughs> I fucking love to bed rot and face app photos. And I'm like clicking my feet together, mm. like a little cricket and like, you know, doing, <laughs> making sure all my friends look hot too. And I mean, I obviously have very naturally hot friends, but yeah, I love it. It's a joy, but there was a much simpler time. Do you know what I don't love? When people ask me what my hobbies are. That's like the name three songs. I also don't like when people, like, so what do you do for fun? I have fucking fun. I what, do you mean? what do you mean? What do you mean? What I, like, you're, you, you're expecting like some like completely off the wall answer that you've never heard anyone say, what do I do for fun? Next, I know we need to come up with the correct, like a, an auto reply to that auto response, because I'm like, there's only a few things that humans can do on planet Earth. One of those when think of a fun thing. Have you ever thought of a fun thing in your life? That's what I do. For fun. <laughs> you can use your imagination. This like the regular shit that people do for fun. What do you think? I could tell you about scuba, but I mostly like to go to happy hour. I hang out with my friends. I, I, like, I go to concerts I, as often as I can. Yeah, that's what I mean. And, and I start talking and saying shit. I'm just like, this is this the most boring shit? I don't know. It's well, like I start talking and I'm like, are you regretting asking me this question? Because or do you realize how stupid it sounds? Like I do the regular fun shit that normal people do. I don't like I would love to like blow you away right now with some crazy shit. But like the standard. OK, I'm some weirdo asking you this and I'm like, what do you like to do friend? Let's have an honest spin of that. What would your things be if you're just being completely honest? What do I fucking feel like doing? I don't know. It depends on the day. Whatever sounds like fun that day. Sometimes seeing nobody and talking to nobody sounds like my kind of fun. Not answering this question right now sounds like more fun than answering it. It's like when you go to the doctor <laughs> and you're, yeah, you're like, you go to the doctor and like, how many drinks do you have a week? And I'm like, socially, I'm, you're not going to be like 47. You're like, <laughs> Sometimes I, you know, all, you're a lie. Sometimes sitting on my phone and like online shopping sounds like fun. Sometimes going here with my friends sounds like fun. Sometimes doing nothing sounds like fun. Depends on my mood. But like, what do I do for fun? I don't. What do I do for fun? I watch The Office for the 87th time <laughs> while my phone is on Do Not Disturb while I'm on TikTok. <laughs> Sometimes I pause the show because I need to focus more on TikTok. <laughs> then I flip it, put that thing down, flip it, reverse it. And then I do the other way. Then I hold my cat. Then I occasionally speak to a living person. I like to spend time on DoorDash, figuring out what would be the most satiating thing that I could possibly get. (laughs) Then sometimes I like to go to the store and get wine. Then sometimes I like to go to my friends and we let's pick a place. Oh, my God. We all are on the same page about the perfect place. We all want to go eat. We go have a meal. We talk shit. We goss. We 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 don't have big ideas and like big groundbreaking things we just want to have a little 
moment in the hen house. I do do other things. I play tennis. I like to bowl. I I, I could tell you these cool things, but like my day to day life, I like to do the normal fun things that people like to do. I don't know. Sometimes uh, going on a trip. I don't. That's what I mean. Also, I travel. I book. I catch flights, not feelings. <laughs> that's what I spend my time doing. <laughs> Hopefully I'm going to Italy soon with a certain Australian. <laughs> But yeah, I I think I think people need to come up with like better questions, more specific questions, because like that shit blows. You know what? That is such a good way of positioning that if someone asks you that you should be like, this is entertaining mediocrity and I need you to <laughs> kick things up a notch. OK, one time someone asked me rather than saying like, how are you or like one of those? They said, like, what are you excited about right now? Like, what what are you Love. looking forward to? What are you excited about? Love. I was like, there we go. There's a question I can actually answer about something that's going on in my life currently or what's coming up in my life that I can sort of like elaborate on to give you some sort of insight to like what I'm about and who I am. That was a really specific, great question. So do what you will with that. But don't ask someone what they fucking do for fun or what they do, period. So oh, what do you do? I love when you get to, like, I mean. I do I'm my best. Not day. I, do. I do my fucking best. I do my fucking best. I love when you get, I mean, I'm not dating at the moment, but when you get to a second or third date and you just still haven't even discussed, there's this, and look, I know just maybe some people feel awkward and there's reasons for that, but we need more variety, I'd say. And I'm going to start answering honestly. That's my commitment. When I do start dating again, eventually, whatever the fuck that is, I'm just going to answer the, and I think it's a good litmus test and see who sticks around. Cause I'm like, or just answer it like, well, I like the question. What do you do for fun? Usually illegal shit. <laughs> Things I can't talk about in a court of law. Yeah. Uh, substances. <laughs> Do what you will. Okay. Want. Yeah. Su mm. Leave that up to your devices. <laughs> your mom probably wouldn't want to drug test me. No, I'm kidding. I go to your dad's house. And yeah. Say what's up. Your mom wouldn't want to meet me because I'm boning your dad. Just like. <laughs> and just see their face and just be like, well, I don't know. What do you do for fun? Well, I go for a hike. Uh, sometimes I hang out with the boys. If your answer for number one thing for doing for fun is hike, take a hike right now, immediately go to Runyon. I'm like, we're Kitty done. doesn't hike. I do not hike. I We like a long walk that is flat. I will not walk on an incline for really any reason. Besides a treadmill when I'm trying to be hot, but like in the wild and people are like, well, you want to hike while we're on a, do you want a date hike? Why no. so you can hear me pant to the point of mm -hmm. I, I can't even <laughs> fucking breathe. If there's heavy breathing involved on a date, that's not. You know? Mm-mm. 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 <laughs> so I have a new bev. The bevy queen. Mm -hmm. Tell me everything. It's called Bubbly Burst. And I brought every single flavor. Yeah, you <laughs> so did. which one do you want? I got triple berry, peach mango, cherry lemonade, pineapple tangerine, watermelon lime, and tropical punch. What's your fave? Well, the bubbly burst flavors are all insanely good. But I mean, I don't know. I crave a different flavor depending on what I'm doing. When I watch shows at night, I might do like a glass of watermelon lime and like a wine glass over ice. And then when I need a midday pick me up, I might do like a cherry lemonade or a peach mango. But I think for my new podcast beverage, I'm going to do the tropical punch. <gasps> Sounds oh, bubbly. Effervescent. Oh, yeah. I'm a berry gal. So can I have the triple berry? Mm hmm. We'll do some ASMR. Yes. Here's all. Meow. This is mm. next level. What is it? It's bubbly burst. And it's a new sparkling water beverage that flips the script on boring with a burst of bold brew flavors, obviously refreshing bubbles and 1% juice. I feel like I was just talking about this, how I'm really conscious of the amount of sugar in drinks. And it looks like there's zero added sugar. And it has antioxidants mm -hmm. and immune support with vitamins E and zinc, which you and I can both use, apparently, since we've been to the hospital recently. <laughs> and only five to ten calories. The best part is that it's bursting with flavor. Love that it gives me the little burst I need. And it makes any activity like really fun. It's like a party in my mouth and everyone's invited. I love how colorful the bottles are too. They're so cute. They make me happy. It's bursting. It's colorful. It's energetic. There's a little saying at the top of each cap. Totally. What does your say? It says fizz on. Mine says drink it all in. Very... That's like really uplifting. Definitely try this new bubbly burst. Bubbly burst is a flavorful new sparkling water beverage from the makers of bubbly. Honestly, I'm going to try the watermelon lime too delicious it's bursting with fruit flavor and again the no sugar added is just really what i need to be all smiles 
Vessi. Vessi. I feel like the weather has been all over the place these days. There was a day last week where it was beautiful and sunny. And then out of nowhere, there was a massive like rainstorm, thunderstorm. And that's why I love my Vessi weekend sneakers. Not only are they super cute, but they're literally perfect come rain or come shine. There's literally nothing worse than wet socks. I'm actually bringing my Vessi Stormburst low tops on our beach vacation that we've been talking about forever to Turks and Caicos because same thing. You need it for all kinds of climates, rain or shine. Mm -hmm. I feel good wearing them around to the beaches, anywhere where anything is slippery. We know I'll be drinking lots of pina coladas, dancing at the bar. We need to be <laughs> careful with that. They're also just great for exploring on sand, pavement excursions. So when we go around doing stuff, I'm good to go. Born from a love for the outdoors, Vessi Footwear is designed to help you step confidently into any adventure from sun-soaked streets to unexpected summer showers. Summer brings warmth, but it also brings surprises. With Vessi, get ready to enjoy the season to its fullest, no matter what it throws your way. Embracing every splash with Vessi's technology ensures you stay cool, comfortable, and stylish from city walks to beachscapes. And they're cute. They are cute. Which is hard to find in a shoe that is so versatile. It's a lifestyle choice that embodies versatility, confidence, and innovation. Elevate your summer activities with Vessi's Stormburst and Weekend Shoes. Discover more at Vessi.com slash disrespectfully. Get your pair today to get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to stay cool and dry. Again, that's Vessi.com slash disrespectfully for shoes that masterfully combine waterproof protection with urban elegance. Just because we're talking about nostalgic thing, I do want to mention this just because it was funny. What? My high school sweetheart, oh. who I dated for three years, who at the crescendo of our three-year dating came to visit me at my college. Like we had broken up, but he was coming to see me. Like my, I went to a big party school. So he came to our syllabus week. You know, it's like the school week starting. So everyone's partying a lot. He came to visit me and so did this girl that I had known who I was. We hadn't been as good friends, if I'm being honest, but we were had been friends since we were like five. And I was hanging out with them and I lost track of them one night and I was like looking for them and calling him and they slept together. I'm pretty sure they boned in a car, found out about it. And I called them. Also, Carly, if you're listening to this, fuck you for real forever. <laughs> So they bone in a car or something and I confronted both of them and they both gaslit me and like, you're crazy, you're crazy. And then around Thanksgiving, she messaged me on Facebook and was like, I'm sorry, it's true. And I was like, girl, I don't want to have this conversation online. Let me know your schedule when I'm home next week for break. And I'd like to meet up and discuss this. And she blocked me. She was a coward. So that's why I say fuck uh. her forever. Again, stand on business, girlfriend. I uh, anyway. So and mind you, he cheated on me so much. I don't care anymore. It's obviously it's been a long time and whatever, but I was so in love with him and he was he was not a good kid and he influenced a lot of me not being a good kid. You know, he was the the one that I smoked weed with in the pop can for the first time. It was with him. Mm. Hi, Terrell. If you're listening, I doubt you are. But he posted my junior year, his senior year winter formal photos. And it's so I have dark brown hair, like box dyed it. And I have scare. Jump, <laughs> jump scare. I have the Ashley Simpson bangs with the bump of the like half up bun. I don't really look at my mentions because I don't want to. It's too scary. And but I saw I like, you know, when you can see the little photo, I was like, what is that? And I looked at it. and was like, oh, my God. And I had lost track of him. I don't have his number. Like, we, I haven't talked to him in years. Oh, also, Jill, fuck you, too. That's one <laughs> other girl that one of his best friends that he boned for years. And I found out actually he came randomly to my going away party when I was moving to California. And his good friend Risha told me that. And I was like, you did fuck Jill. I knew it. So fuck you too, if you're listening. Anyway, I messaged him and I was like, oh my God, where did you get these photos? And he was like, I'm at my parents' house right now. They say what's up and they have them. And I was like, can you mail them to me? Because I wanted them. Like, I, I don't have any photos from that time in oh. like high school or anything. And also, and it's like, I I look at back on him with fondness now, right? It was like puppy love and he hurt me a lot. And he he was beyond the cheating he was so horrible to me so so horrible um Wait. but i like look at it and laugh now right and so we were going back I and forth. love those photos i repost Sorry. i reposted I remember those times i reposted it and i went with a caption and i was like fun facts we were drunk in these photos this is box dyed brown hair this is my high school sweetheart he cheated on me a lot hi t and reposted it and i didn't th i don't think that he expected me to repost it nor to blow up his spot but Little did uh, he know that I'd eventually have a podcast and be able to chit chat about it. So 
honestly, love nothing but love to you because you're a silly goose and you taught me a lot. But he taught me the power <laughs> of silence when he slept with my fr- friend. And that was like the final final deal breaker. He blew me up for like two months, calling me constantly, texting me. And he always had the upper hand. The second I just completely stopped talking to him, I was like, whoa, this mm-hmm. is powerful. So, you know, thanks for that, too. Anyway, isn't that so funny? Nostalgia. Oh, my God. Back to the blockbuster days. Your high school sweetheart cheating on you. If some of you weren't cheated on, but your high school sweetheart, it shows. I didn't have a high school sweetheart. No high school sweetheart? I had this whole thing of like, um, what am I going to do? Like, continue dating this dude after high school? Like, I, I, had, I like went out with that, you know. Yeah. I had like little boyfriends never anything serious because i'm just like i for what i want to have fun in high school and like go out with like a lot of boys <laughs> and you know but like i think i just knew that i was not gonna continue that post high school so like what was the point i'm getting out of here afterwards like you know I, bye. I, I there were times in which i remember i got in a fight with my mom once about i was like i'm maybe some people marry their high school sweethearts and she's like dana you're not Marry him and blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. And it's like literally so laughable now. I don't know. Is this crazy to say? I, we lost our virginities to each other. I mean, we were obviously, we were 16. We started dating and dated for three years. So obviously in that time, we lost our virginities to each other. And one time we definitely got caught by my mom. And it was a, it was like a, such a big fallout of epic proportions. He like basically ran out of my house half naked. And my mom was Yikes. That not... Is- she wasn't too happy about it. Wow. All right. Well, this is the perfect segue to base. Who's in your basement? I, I forgot who's in mine. Obviously, Joe. Oh, Joe's no. in my basement this week. You loser. Why don't you go post another thing about Tom Shorts that he doesn't acknowledge while he's in Hawaii with his girlfriend? You're not his girlfriend. Just want to remind you of that. Who's in yours? Is it weird that like nobody like pissed me off this week? I feel like this is the second time this has happened with you and I don't get it because I, I will never not have someone in my basement or something. Well, I mean, listen, there's there's always like somebody in my basement, but like, it's just weird that this week I was just like, you know what? Joe and Rachel can go in my basement for being so passive aggressive online. Like do better. I know that's boring. I mean, it's low hanging fruit, but whatever. Let's do home down heroes. Cause they're okay. not boring. They're you not boring. boring. I know my basement's boring this week guys, but it will probably be a better one next week. Yeah. The week is young. I'm having an off week. You guys, these are truly amazing. Keep sending them in. Disrespectfullypod at gmail.com. Vanessa says, hi, ladies. Love the podcast. Want to share a story of how I was a bit unhinged in my last relationship. A little backstory. I was with my ex for four years in my early 20s. We ended up growing apart and decided to break up. It was mutual. And although we have always worked together since we first got together, we we're okay to be around each other without any issue. Once we broke up, he was hanging out more with his shitty friends who just wanted to be drunk and high all the time the type of guys who don't have jobs and are always shit-faced. He also told me he wanted to be a bad boy because being a nice guy was no fun. A few months go by, we're still friendly with each other and we see each other at work often. But now he wants to get back together and starts buying me gifts and writing me sweet letters. After some time of him trying to get back together with me, it finally worked. I was struggling finding a place to live and was staying with friends while saving money. But when we got back together, I ended up moving back in with my ex. I quickly remembered why we broke up in the first place. We went out on a date and I noticed a very drunk girl who was falling all over the place and her friends were just as drunk helping her. I tried to help them. My ex kept yanking me away saying, whatever happens to that girl, she deserves it. That's what happens when you get that drunk. Ew. I was appalled and disgusted that I was in a relationship with this fucking loser. During our time apart, I'd mentioned to my ex that I was hooking up with a guy who made me squirt for the first time. And my ex took this as a challenge that now he must make me squirt. (laughs) Although he never even knew how to fuck me for the four years we were together. After that comment he made about the drunk girl while we were out on our out on our date, I made sure to drink a shit load of water before we had sex so I could spitefully squirt all over this fool. (laughs) Literally, I I was just peeing on him as many times as I could, pretending to be (laughs) coming. Just because I wanted to spite him. I wish I wasn't a broke girl who was living paycheck to paycheck so I could have just left him when I heard that shit. We broke up the day I left officially, leaving him with a pee... <laughs> leaving with a peed mattress with no mattress cover. Vanessa, you are a hero. <laughs> That's Yeah, that is hero shit. And I'd say pretty considerate to drink a lot of water and try to make that happen, even if it was out of spite. Yeah. And also, you saying for just, big, big yuck, that guy saying... I- I love that your mind like went there. You're like, you know what? You want you want to make me squirt? Then I'm gonna just chug, 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 and let you think that. That's like the planning that went into that. Genius. (laughs) 
Well, and again, not to the way that she realized how disgusting that is for Amanda. To say, she, whatever happens, she deserves it. Why is it always women intervening mm-hmm. and helping other women? Can men, if you want to prove that you're not a bad guy or a danger to society, please inter- see, you see something, say something. If a girl is obviously wasted and someone's mm-hmm. taking her somewhere or she's not well, please help. Why do they think that women deserve what they get because of like what they're wearing or like because they're like drunk? It's just like that is basement behavior. That guy's um, that guy's that guy's in the beat. That guy's in my basement. He's going in your basement. I am so excited to read you. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Gabby says, hi, Dana and Katie. I think I might win for the worst date story. I met a guy on Tinder and the goal was just to hook up her. My request was hurting pretty bad at the time from a previous breakup. He picks me up and takes me to a nice hotel. He was super hot and we had a few mutual friends from the same small town. He pulls out a bottle of wine and I asked him if he had a corkscrew. He says no, but begins looking for something that he could open the wine with. He pulls out his pocket knife and assures me he can get it open. Not even two seconds later, the dude cuts off his entire pinky in front of me. (gasps) And I had to legit wrap it up while he looked like he was about to pass out. I drive him to the hospital and he asked me if I want to stay and meet his mom since she was on the way. I quickly called my sister to come and get me and bolted out of there so fast. He texted me and said he didn't want to wait for surgery. So he left without a pinky. What a dumbass. Still to this day, I tell my friends about it because it's just so crazy that he still doesn't have a pinky. I'm a day one listener of the pod. Woo! And waited for it to come out. And I love both of you so much. Was just at Surf my birthday last week. And it was such a good time. The thing is, you like, you want to leave an impression on someone, right? Like, you want them to remember you. (laughs) This man is going to remember you, Gabby, for the rest of his pinky Every time he looks at his hand, (laughs) he's going to remember. He tries to count to five on that hand and he's like, what? (laughs) Gabby. I mean, also, I uh, when I, when she said pocket knife, I knew what was coming. I, I'm just like, no, I didn't. I wasn't thinking that. I thought like, just, I don't know. First of all, what do you mean you don't want to wait for surgery? You're like, you know what? I got, I gotta go. Like, sir, you are missing a limb. This is not you at being at a, at a department store waiting to see if they have the size shoe you want. This is a digit. <laughs> yeah, this isn't like. You go to a restaurant. They're like, the wait's going to be 45 minutes. Like, uh, do we, we want to wait? You're like, let's try, go, let's try down the street. It's an appendage. Truly, truly <laughs> bizarre. But I guess, you Dude. know, we make our own choices. This person, like, you think you're impatient. <laughs> yeah, this person beats me in the impatient Olympics. My friend in San Diego, when I lived there, was on a first date once on a hike. Uh, first red flag. Yeah. But it was this really popular hike and beautiful like right on the water and it had just rained and it's you know there when it rains you have to be careful for rattlesnakes i i once ran into one on See, a, this way on, you don't hike i once ran into one on a trail but so he drove them and they're going back to the car and as they were getting in the, in the car there was a rattlesnake underneath his car he obviously didn't see it and it lunged out and bit him so she had to drive to the hospital on their first date Drive in there. He lived and they never saw each other again. See, hikes, got the note ropes, can't do it. Should we do a little WWDD? Let's do WWDD. Will says, hi, you two. First, let me just say how much I respect and admire each of you. Your pod has been such a bright spot in recent days. And I want to thank you for your openness and energy on this project. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Last fall, my mom passed away quite suddenly and unexpectedly from a very aggressive form of cancer. I'm very sorry to hear that. Losing one of my best friends and biggest systems of support has flipped my life upside down and my husband's life, who's like a son to my mom. We are thankful to have one another to grieve with and support each other. But I would so appreciate your advice on the grief process. What are some actions or things you did to help you both make your way through these types of losses in your lives? With love, Will. He, him. First of all, we love having male listeners, so you'd love more. Thank you. I'll go ahead and start yeah, this one. You have mm, definitely more experience. First of all, Will, I'm so sorry this happened to you. And sounds like you were very close with your mom. And mother loss in general, I just think is such a specific one because, you know, most people are close with their moms and they're just mm-hmm. our caregivers and nurturers. And you anticipate they'll be with you for a set amount of time in your life until you're old and grown up. And sometimes that doesn't happen. So I lost my mom when I was 22 to a really rare and aggressive brain cancer. And so I also relate to you with that, with the quickness of it. I would say the biggest piece of advice looking back is please try and have tenderness and compassion with yourself because Mm -hmm. 
it grieving is just not linear. And mm-hmm. I, I'm a great case study for how to do it really poorly. It took me forever to move through that loss. Like I would say I wasn't really totally well until like eight years into losing my mom, honestly. I was also really hard on myself and judgmental of how I behaved. And you know, you do have to take responsibility for your actions if you're like lashing out on people you love and whatever. But you just have to be patient because it sounds corny, but it's just true. I don't I don't think time heals all wounds, but I definitely think it makes it easier. And there's this great picture I once saw, and it's basically a photo of two balls that are the same size. And it's in talking about grief, the first ball has a tiny jar around it. And the second ball has a giant jar, but the ball stays the same size. And people basically are saying, you grow around your grief. It doesn't Mm -hmm. shrink. And that's just kind of how you get through it. But it sounds like you have a wonderful husband that is going to be a support system. So you just have to be able to lean on the people around you and, you know, let yourself feel it when you need to feel it because it comes in waves and in the beginning it's every other minute and then every other hour and so on and so forth until you know it's fewer and farther in between but it it's always there and don't fight the sad please let yourself Mm -hmm. be sad and have a menti be when you need to because you unfortunately can't outrun it and I also think that that's something that I did for a long time was try to suppress those feelings because there I've I've talked about her so many times and this loss so many times but I just can't even properly express how important my mom was to me and like the people in my life like Katie that didn't get to meet her who didn't like actually see it I feel like it's just hard to explain so like it totally derailed me and then it bled out into every other area of my life and I just didn't do a very good job of it but had I not been just trying to be okay trying not to deal with it I probably would have been better sooner Mm -hmm. but I um, got to where I needed to eventually and I am better than okay now. And I know she'd be really, really proud of that and love that a lot. So just know, like also try and hold on when you're in those really hard moments and know that eventually you will wake up and it will feel easier and you might even find yourself in a better place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that was really long winded. I'm sorry, but Mm -hmm. you know, it's something I have a lot of experience with. Yeah. I mean, I think like you said, grief is not linear. There's going to be days where that are a lot easier, days that are sad, and it's going to go back and forth like that. So allowing yourself as much grace as possible. Um, and I think also like while well, you have like your husband as an amazing support system, um, also having, you know, something like therapy that's sort of like that neutral person to talk to can also really help at times as well. Yeah. Great thing to mention. I've been in therapy for mm-hmm. 11 years. I'm also medicated. It's I'm not saying that's for everyone. You need to talk to your physician. but like. Those were also fundamental things for me to get to where I am. But and there's also there's other things like paying attention. Do you need to move your body every day? Do you Mm -hmm. even if it's just like going on a walk every day, taking a shower every day, which sounds gross. But like sometimes when you're down bad, you just like don't want to get out of bed. So little things like that. help. Yeah, we love you. (laughs) Marie says, first off, every woman needs girlfriends like you. Where do I sign up? Here's my short, sweet request for advice. I'm a lesbian and have been married to my best friend for three years now. She is everything I was looking for and still is. My problem is that when I want to hang out with my friends, my wife wants to come. When I tell her nobody else's partner is coming, it hurts her feelings. Because she loves my friends and they love her too. But sometimes you just need friend time. What other way can I explain that because my partner is a woman does not equal an auto invite to girls night? Oh, I've never given that a thought. But like that is that must be a tough one, too, because it's like, yeah, when your friends all enmeshed into your life and they all get along. I mean, that's a wonderful thing when like your friends love your partner and they love your friends. Like that is a great thing. And it must be a difficult thing when you're like, no, this is a girl's night. And I know you're also a lady, but like girls, but it's, it's also difficult when it it is kind of one of those things where it's like, but these are like my friends that I'm I've had and that are separate from like our relationship. And I want to just, I want, I guess it's mostly, mostly just like, I want time just, separate i think we have to like also have autonomy in in our relationship that it's time just spent away from one another i think that i think that's more than okay to ask for it's just like we need time that's just that's just separate right yes i think autonomy is a really good way of putting it because it's also i think important to hold that boundary but then also express this isn't a reflection of my love for you of Mm -hmm. our relationship it you you should say it in a delicate kind way but it isn't actually about you. This is about me and my needs for time with my friends. It doesn't matter that we're all the same gender. It's not, we're not trying to exclude you, but 
every relationship, if you, if you are spending 24 seven with your partner, that is a recipe for mm -hmm. disaster. Mm -hmm. So I think just explaining it, it coming from a kind way, but then being like, you should also take your time where you can doing if it's hanging out with your friends, if it's taking up a hobby, like online shopping, whatever you want to do. <laughs> I think it's really healthy to spend time away from your relationship. It allows you to maintain your own unique person and your own identity because you tend to lose yourself. Just it, it happens. I think in relationships, you kind of it's hard to maintain who you are. And a lot of ways to maintain that is by having your own hobbies, is by having uh, extracurricular friendships and not relationships, but you know what I mean? Just just things outside of your relationship that like keep you well-rounded, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I think like, to what you said, making it not personal and making it just really about you and your need and um, making it important. They'll understand. They have to. Yeah. You got to approach it that way. Yeah. It, yeah. I think it's just in the in the execution of what yeah. you want to say. Okay. Jacqueline says, congratulations on your podcast. Loving your topics, stories, and advice. You two complement each other so well. I also want to mention what a bad bitch boss Katie is on Vanderpump. Thanks. Somehow you managed to stay super classy in such a shit show. <laughs> Dana, I appreciate your authenticity. I struggle with anxiety and love how open you are about the topic. Anyway, on with my question. Me and my partner have been together for nine years. We have been through a lot together. We have a one-year-old little girl together. So needless to say, things have shifted a bit between us. I'm wondering if you have any advice on how to evolve individually while staying connected. We are both turning into different people in a positive way. However, I think we are struggling with how to learn each other again, if that makes sense. Anyway, I love both of you. Thank you for taking the time to read this and keep Keep on kicking ass. I mean, this kind of piggybacks off of what we were just yeah. saying a little bit in relationships. It's it is hard to while you have like the autonomy and like the time spent apart with, you know, your own hobbies and interests and all those things like that. Also, the growing together sometimes that, that can be um, a challenge as well, because you want to make sure you're finding ways to also like connect and come together and maintain, you know, still date each other in ways and find things that excite you and surprise each other and making sure that you are on the same page and connecting deeper. And um, I think that's sometimes where people like lose touch a little bit. So, and sometimes people never do come back to that. Like, and that is unfortunate, but I think going on like dates, getting excited about that, being intentional about conversations and the time spent together and making sure it's like quality I think it's a really great way to go about it I was literally about to say the word intentional first of all I think it's great you're both growing and changing as mm -hmm. we should be evolving all the time but you're either going to grow away from each other or toward each other and I do yeah. think sometimes people grow away from each other and that can't be helped but I do think sometimes it happens when people aren't as intentional so I think yeah. the first step like you're recognizing it so I think it would be great to have a really honest conversation about where you're both at, how things have shifted and how, you know, what is still working and what you both want to do to improve this new version of your relationship, which also can be really fun and exciting. And if you are intentional about it, I'm guessing you'll fall into a new, even better groove than before. Yeah. I don't know, like having a child too, sometimes you guys fall into like, oh, well now I'm, I'm mom and you're dad. And I think some people just, they fall into those roles and they don't feel like they're, they have the same like mojo. <laughs> I don't know. But I think just having conversations, communication is always going to be key. Yeah. Being a parent is hard. I'm not a parent, but my sister is a parent to my nieces that I'm very close with. And holy shit, you have a niece you're very close with and our friends all have kids. So mm -hmm. yeah, I also, I salute you. It's not easy. Leia yeah. sitting there pregnant listening to this. <laughs> okay. Hannah says, I'm obsessed with you both in your podcast. You guys literally inspire me to be an independent and unbothered badass bitch. That being said, I've been with my boyfriend for almost five years now and we live together. He's my best friend. He treats me like a queen and I can't imagine my life without him. However, I graduated college last year and I'm working full time in a shit pay research job to increase the chances of getting into PhD programs. Congratulations. That's amazing. There's no good programs in my city and I've been waiting for a while to just experience something new. His job is here in San Diego and he's supposed to take over his family company and doesn't want to leave because his life is here. I've told him I refuse to do long distance and I've worked my ass off to get into a good college, graduate early with a 4.0, 
and work under one of the best psychiatrists in the country, all to achieve my dream of getting my doctorate. I can't let my hard work go to waste, and I, but I can't imagine leaving him. I know I'm only 22. My decisions now are going to affect my future career. What should I do? First of all, you are amazing. The incredibly badass. I honestly look up to you. That's that's so cool that you've worked so hard and you're doing all of that. And I think it's great that you have the foresight to know that, you know, decisions you're making right now will affect your future. I do think, though, you're 22 and we can't tell you what to do. But if you have these big dreams in mind, I think that it makes a lot of sense to do what's right for you from that perspective. And if you are meant to end up with this person, you will. Mm -hmm. But I think that also if you're already asking the question, you maybe know the answer. Because if someone fundamentally is not going to change where they are and you need to go different locations, you don't want to do long distance. It's kind of fitting a square peg into a round hole. Yeah, I think when you're in your 20s, Always choose yourself. One hundred. Invest in yourself as much as possible at this point in your life. Again, if you're meant to end up together, you you will. But it, right now, if like you want to be focusing on yourself and making really big, important decisions and chasing those dreams, you one hundred percent should. And if you don't want to do long distance, I don't blame you. That's just shit's tough, and you're gonna be busy and studying and learning and growing and doing all those things anyway. I don't blame you for not wanting to do that. Um, you're going to also change so much as a person. The things you want now are not in terms of like, not necessarily career, but just lifestyle preferences and, you know, just more like personal things probably is going to change a lot anyway. So who knows? I just think right now really invest and choose yourself. And by the way, I'm sure he is amazing and has treated you well, but also please don't get stuck in that trap of this person's great, but I have this huge thing that's for me that I need that I want to pursue. But what if I never find someone as good? Like, do not. You are so young. Your life is mm -hmm. just beginning. So like Katie said, that's such a good way of putting it. Invest in yourself as often as possible. And obviously he doesn't want to change his life either. So I think you're at a crossroads. So I say go and do it. I mean, you can always give him a forehead kiss and say, I'll, I'll see you when I see you. And maybe, I don't know. You can always, you don't have to close the door. You can be remain friends. And if you go on a each other and see if it's still you know alive but keep your options open get that doctorate girl yeah don't let us down just kidding do what you want but no do it <laughs> also you guys just like hometown heroes please keep sending in your wwdds and keep them as short as you can it will be more likely to be picked it's just easier we love getting submissions please send them in i think that's all we have for today that is all we have who knows coming up maybe we'll have a guest Hopefully, maybe not. put it in the universe for us, guys. If we collective the remote coven all puts our remote hands <laughs> together, go watch the craft, watch what they do. Let's go to the beach. Okay, bye. Bye. Babe, you're going to see the power of women, like disrespectfully. Respectfully.